Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at something that, well, frankly, I didn't understand fully until I actually got to go see it running, and that is the Intel FPGA-based IPUs. Now, you might be wondering, what is an IPU? And I've heard DPU, I've heard CPU, GPU, all that kind of stuff. And Intel calls this class of network processors that are really infrastructure processors, it's infrastructure processing unit, or IPU. And these in the Intel nomenclature actually span things from, I guess, the ASIC-based Mount Evans that we looked at on the STH main site, all the way up to some things that we call exotic solutions, which really have FPGAs and x86 CPUs, sometimes Xeon Ds, on a single card, and they do some really cool things. Now, we've seen other examples of the ASIC-based ones, kind of like that Mount Evans that we recently saw at Intel Vision 2020, but we haven't necessarily seen the FPGA ones. And frankly, I didn't really understand why you would use an FPGA instead of an ASIC and all that kind of stuff. And so what I did was I traveled up to the Intel or the X Altera campus in Santa Clara, and I actually got to go see how these things work. And we set up a demo in the lab. Now I did have to travel from Texas to Santa Clara. We will say that Intel sponsored this video. Now they did not get editorial control. They didn't get to review this video before it went out or anything like that. Everything's done editorially independently, like it always is on STH, but I just want to get that disclosure out up front. So the basic setup here is that we actually got to go into the Intel lab and see this demo run in front of me. Now we have done a couple pieces in this line previously. We looked at the Marvell Keoxia EM6 drives where you actually just had, you know, NVMe over fabric SSDs that you literally just plugged into Ethernet, didn't have any, you know, storage server or anything like that. And so that was a really cool technology. We looked at that a little while ago. The second one in the series, we actually ran ZFS and iSCSI on an NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPU. Now that was really there just to kind of show you the difference between the ARM CPU and then also the networking and, and all the acceleration and stuff like that. And I just wanted to kind of show like, hey, using some pretty standard uh, you know, stuff that people I think really understand, right? We've been using ZFS and iSCSI for years. So I think that that's something that frankly, I think a lot of people can relate to. And that's why we did that piece, just to kind of show you the idea of having this control plane on your NIC that's running its own operating system and all that kind of stuff. But for today's video, we're gonna look at the more exotic solution where you have an FPGA that you can customize and get very high performance from, but then also you have a Xeon D control plane. And that's what we're gonna look at. So let's get to that. Now, let's talk really quickly about what is on Big Spring Canyon, which is the IPU that we're looking at here. Now, what we actually have is we have two main components. We have an FPGA as well as a Xeon D. The Xeon D is the Intel Xeon D 1612 processor, which is a four core, eight thread processor. That is really the control plane for the entire unit. And the idea there is that that runs its own version of Linux. And it's basically what the infrastructure provider uses to go provision services via the FPGA. And so that's kind of really what that's for. It also has some acceleration that you could use if you wanted to not go over the FPGA. Now the FPGA of course is the big deal because that actually provides all of the other functionality. You get the entire data path that runs all the way from the network ports or the 100 gig network ports all the way to the PCIe bus basically goes through that FPGA. And the important thing there is that the FPGA has its own memory, but it's also able to do things that are not necessarily what you would be able to do with a ASIC or just a normal CPU. Specifically, you can create a fast data path that goes from the network interfaces all the way through the FPGA. You can do anything you really want in that data path. You can do compression, encryption, anything like that. And then you can finally present the devices that you want to the host system using the PCIe bus. Now, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set up this demo and I'm gonna explain how we use this card in the broader sense and we're actually able to go and do NVMe over fabric, but do something that's even a little bit cooler than that and really create a diskless system. Now, what we basically have is a rack full of supermicro servers and where we are when we're doing this is we're in the Santa Clara Center. I'm actually in Hamburg, Germany at ISC right now doing this. This is not a fake background. This is actually at the CCH in ISC in Hamburg. But when we did this recording, we were actually in Santa Clara in a lab and it took us a lot of approvals to be able to get through and get into this lab. But basically what we have set up is an entire rack of servers. And these are really super micro ultra servers. And the idea here is that we have a target system and we have a host system, kind of like you would do in any kind of you know fabric type of storage. And we have a whole bunch of SSDs. So we have NVMe SSDs, which specifically here are the Intel P4610 NVMe SSDs. And then in the systems, if you look at the back of the systems, what you'll actually see is that we do have 
have the Intel IP. So we have Big Spring Canyon here in the, you know, that's our IP that we have in the back of the system. And there's a whole bunch of spaghetti wiring. Now I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, that's not good cable management. Please just understand that this is specifically set up to be able to go do this. This is not a production setup. This is full lab. And in fact, it was so loud in this lab that, well, number one, we couldn't get any usable audio. And number two, it was actually, there was so much vibration in the lab that actually the cameras were shaking a pretty, pretty significant amount, even with image stabilization. I mean, that's just how much is going on in this lab. This is the old Altera building in Santa Clara. So what you're going to see is that we're going to set up this rack and you see the rack over on the left-hand side, but what we're really going to focus on is the screen. And the screen is going to have a number of different terminals. The bottom left-hand terminal, well, that's actually the Xeon D that's on the Big Spring Canyon card, which is made by Silicon, but that's the actual uh, Xeon D. So that's the control plane for this entire IPU. Then on the top, what we'll have is we'll have the host system. And then on the bottom right, we're going to have the target system. Now, the actual demo itself, what it's basically going to do at a very high level is it's going to take the NVMe drives from a server it's going to present those as NVMe over fabric targets. And then what we're basically going to do is we're going to take those NVMe over fabric targets and we're going to present NVMe devices to the host server. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start vert IO and also initialize the card. Now the script that is zooming past here, that's just programming the FPGA. Remember that with an FPGA, you can change your data path by adding new functionality. So there's a step where you actually need to go and program the FPGA and get it all ready and stuff like that. Luckily, we can do this directly from the Intel Xeon D processor. And that is the same processor that the infrastructure provider can use to really manage the card. And this is an example of how an infrastructure provider might actually use that processor to go and manage the card itself. Now, once it's done, we can see that we don't have any NVMe devices on the card, but we do have them on the target, and that is the bottom right terminal. And on the target server, we have eight NVMe devices, and those are 1.6 terabyte Intel P4610 SSDs that we showed a little bit earlier. The next step is that we're gonna connect the IPU to the target server and grab six NVMe SSDs over the network. Once that's all done, we can then go to the host server and those terminals are really at the top of the screen and we can start finding our SSDs. Now here, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go from having no SSDs installed in that host server to it's gonna look like we have six installed SSDs because that's how many we brought up on the IPU. You'll notice that the, to the host system here, these drives look exactly like the drives on the target server. I mean, the host server thinks it has standard NVMe devices, and it does not know that it, these things are really being delivered over the 100 gigabit ethernet fabric using NVMe over fabric on the IPU. And that is a major point here because this is not just an NVMe over fabric device to the, to the server. What it really is, is this looks like it's an NVMe device. Remember this thing, this IPU is being plugged directly into the the PCIe bus. And on that bus, it basically is telling the host server, hey, I'm an NVMe drive. And then the host server is saying, okay, cool, I'm gonna go and read and write data from you. And the IPU handles everything else from that point on. So really that's the power of the FPGA here. You're really emulating an NVMe SSD. Now that we have those drives installed in our system, the next question is in terms of performance. And also I'm just gonna note that we are gonna have IO stat on both the host, which is on top and also the target system on the bottom. And so you can actually see what's going on in terms of CPU utilization and also just IO access to and from the drives. Now, first what we're gonna do is we are going to run a 4K random read script and what you'll see here is that we're somewhere in that like 1.2 million to 1.4 million 4K random read IOPS range, which is pretty darn good, especially for a network device, right? And then when we go and swap over from, instead of 4K random, instead we'll do a sequential read test. And you're gonna see that we're kind of getting in that like maybe, I don't know, five and a half to like six gigabyte a second range, which is actually really good. Remember that this is all going over the network. And in terms of write IOPS, we're gonna do that one real quick. And again, you know, we're somewhere in that like, I don't know, 1.3 million, 1.4 million-ish range. It jumps around a little bit, but that, that's basically pretty darn similar to where we were on the read side. And then when we do the sequential writes, again, we're somewhere maybe in that like five and a half to six gigabyte per second range. Again, this is all moving around a little bit, but just kind of showing you guys kind of what the actual IO and, and what it actually looks like. And taking a quick note here on the IO stats on the right hand side, what you're going to see is that the CPU utilization in the two systems is actually pretty darn low. I mean, when we're doing sequential transfers, we're talking about pushing that, you know, say five and a half to six gigabytes per second, but we're still in only that 3% or so CPU utilization range. And then on the 
you know, random side, I think we're kind of closer to maybe like 10%. But one thing that you do have to remember, especially on that host system, is that we're actually running Fio on that host system. So some of that CPU utilization uh, is, is not actually, you know, the drive access. That CPU utilization is really just generating the Fio traffic. But still, the CPU is still putting data onto what it thinks is a local NVMe SSD, even though it's not. And just writing that data does have some CPU impact, but we're not talking about something where like doing this, you know, pushing 1 million plus IOPS is using something like, I don't know, like 50% of the CPU cores. It's, it's really using like 10% CPU utilization to even just do this benchmark, which includes the traffic generation. Okay, so I guess the question now is like, why does this matter? Or maybe what is the next level of this in terms of why people are so darn excited about this whole IPU DPU thing? And I think there are really two reasons. One is management and the other is really the features and performance. And instead of looking at my face during this, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna just show some extra B-roll, including taking apart the card, because I think a lot of folks haven't seen that before. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go and roll that instead of looking at me. Now on the management side, if you are the infrastructure provider, whether that's a cloud provider or you're an enterprise IT department, if you're installing these DPUs, you can then manage the cards via the Xeon D, and that's really managing the FPGA, but it also means you can do things like you can provision bare metal servers and then provision the network bandwidth and security, and you can also do things like encrypt the outbound tunnels and all that kind of stuff, as well as the storage, and even if there's no storage attached to the server directly, you can still deliver something that is like basically like having a local NVMe device, just you're delivering it over the network. And so that means that you get more efficient use of your storage. And while we're showing single drives here, I do wanna just point out the fact that you could totally have an NVMe over fabric target that is doing something like actually handling erasure coding or you know handling that kind of redundancy that we're not showing in this demo, but that can be done on the external devices, you know, on the target server. And the other thing you could do is you could also, in theory, manage that on the IPU itself as well, but we're just not showing that here. But instead of just saving costs based on the stranded storage or storage that's installed in a system, but that's not being used. And so, you know, that's a big problem in a lot of data centers. You have all this flash that's stuck in a server and you can't really use it in another server that needs it. And so just the idea of being able to get rid of that stranded storage, I think is actually something that's a pretty fun aspect of this. And because this particular solution is an FPGA based solution, the infrastructure provider can actually encrypt and decompress data before it leaves the system. And you know, you can totally go and put your own algorithms to go do all that stuff. And you're really not using system resources to do it. And here we're basically being limited by the network bandwidth in our demos. And so if we had inline compression on the FPGA, we could potentially see a sequential performance jump because the host system thinks it's just writing, you know, whatever data to the NVMe device. But what's really happening is that that data is getting compressed before it's being set and then you know, because we're sending compressed rather than uncompressed data, it means that we have less network bandwidth and it means that that, you know, lowers our costs on the network and also congestion. And since the IPU is bringing the storage over the network to the system, it's able to offload not just the NVMe over fabric stack. I mean, if you think about cloud providers that are you know, known to encrypt all traffic going in and out of servers, having the storage and networking traffic along with you know, private tunnels created and managed and all that kind of stuff on the host systems, that's really like a pretty awesome capability. JD.com is a huge public customer for these IPU devices that we're looking at here. And that's a very, you know, it's a public customer, but Intel has many others that we can't really talk about. And finally, just because I know folks will want to see this, this is the LS CPU from the IPU's Xeon D 1612 CPU. And also we have the LS Topo, so you can just kind of see what's going on on the card. So on this journey of discovery up to Santa Clara, what I definitely noticed was that there are reasons that you are using an IPU and specifically this FPGA plus Xeon D. Again, the Xeon D is really there for the control plane because as an infrastructure provider, you need to have something to be able to go and make sure that your system is secure and that you know you have some control over it. On the FPGA side, it gives you benefits like you can actually go do your dual 100 gig networking, but you can also do things like your entire NVMe over fabric offload. You can emulate an actual device because you have an FPGA a there, you can actually emulate an NVMe device, which is um, super cool. And then the other thing is that in between, you can actually do things that, that are customized, right? You can go run your own compression, own encryption, all that kind of stuff in that data path because you're running this on an FPGA and you're not gonna go and eat, you know, crazy poor performance like if you actually went to CPU cores. So frankly, the idea that you can have a custom accelerator or custom accelerators 
in the path I think is really cool. And I think Intel is actually making some recipes for their FPGA so you can do some of this kind of base level stuff. And then other folks that you know are big infrastructure providers, they're actually adding their own value. Maybe they have a new networking solution or new uh, encryption that they're using and, and compression thing that they're using. And so they wanna go put that in the data path and have it be very fast. This gives them the option to go do that. Now, of course, other places like Google Cloud use things like the Mount Evans ASIC DPU IPU. And we are gonna take a look at that hopefully when we can, but my guess is that it's probably gonna take a couple months because this year, 2022, I think that production is really focused for Google's cloud. And then in 2023, I think Intel said that they're gonna open up the Mount Evans platform for more folks, but we're definitely, as soon as we can, we're gonna definitely go do that. And we do have other DPUs uh, that we're gonna be looking at in the industry. We've already done a couple pieces on that. And so I totally think that you should go check those out. And hey, I just wanna say thank you to the Intel team. I've been asking to do IPU content at Intel for a long time, and it took a long time to also get approvals just to get into this lab and something that you may not have noticed but we actually do have barricades even in the back of the shot just so that you can't see all the other really cool things that are going on in this lab it definitely took a lot of work and so I just want to recognize the Intel team that put that all together and got me actually there to be able to go and show you guys this because I think it's super cool but it's also something that kind of requires being in a lab to kind of show you guys these days so thanks again to that team and if you did like this video well why don't you give it a like click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.